I've had question marks over Hornby's TTS decoder strategy for some time now, and there was virtual radio silence on this topic all through last year, despite talk of 21-pin decoders and smoke capabilities for some of their STEAM models. With their HM7000 announcement this week, is this the answer I was looking for? It's time to take a closer look. Hi, thanks for joining today's video. I had intended to cover the general topic of my growing dismay with DCC in a video later this year, but Hornby's announcement this week warrants some consideration in the context of that discussion. If you're familiar with the channel, you'll know that I'm a heavy DCC user, and every locomotive I own is ultimately run under DCC, with the majority also being sound enabled. Just because I'm a heavy DCC user and DCC sound user in particular, doesn't mean I'm 100% satisfied with the way DCC has evolved. My issues with DCC are many. The sound decoder costs are between 110 to 120 pounds with sound on board. These have to represent some of the worst value pieces of electronic kit you can buy today. Controller costs are another headache, and in general, it's a piece of equipment that was designed in the last century, and it looks its age. DCC is hugely lacking in terms of flexibility, there's a need for a programmer to be able to reprogram a decoder to a different locomotive type. Now I have a number of Soundtracks Economy decoders to give me some flexibility, but these are ultimately limited by the size of their sound libraries and the number of locomotives they can cover. Then you need a different programmer for each vendor. The need to put the loco in the programming track to change anything down to something as simple as the volume for a particular sound feature is simply ridiculous in a modern day solution. Also, depending on your DCC controller, you may not be able to access higher level function numbers, so all of these wonderful features on your latest locomotive can't even be exercised. You could argue that DCC is a mature technology, and it certainly is, with the NMRA standard dating back to 1993. But it's also an old technology. If you compare a phone or a television set from when DCC was originally introduced to what is available today for the same price, the difference is huge, whereas the improvements on the DCC side are significantly more modest Railway modelling and DCC are nowhere near as mainstream as mobile phones and TVs, but the point is that the underlying technologies have moved on, and while step function changes have taken place in other areas, DCC decoders have simply evolved without undergoing any similar level of change. Such has been my frustration with DCC. I had been considering a project to marry a low-cost ARM-based single-board computer with a basic DCC decoder in order to create a Wi-Fi controlled locomotive with a downloadable sound capability. While Bluetooth based, the fundamental of Hornby's HM7000 solution are very similar to what I was hoping to achieve, so I'm shelving any of my own project work to see exactly what Hornby deliver. While I've given Hornby a rough ride in recent times in terms of quality and price issues, I've been a long-term advocate of their TTS decoders as a means of providing low-cost sound support for the masses. TTS was compelling in that it provides 70 to 80 percent of the functionality for less than 30 to 40 percent of the price. Equipped with a decent speaker, I've been happy enough to run with DCC for my Class 43 HSTs, for example, where a two decoder full DCC sound solution could have added as much as 240 pounds to the cost versus 70 pounds or so for Hornby's Class 43 double pack and a couple of iPhone speakers. Historically, TTS has struggled more with Steam models where close synchronization with the motor operation is required and the limited number of sound channels is also an issue. For diesels, and even more so for electric locos, the TTS limitations are less apparent. And the new sound system is due to give additional channel, uh, so that really should help in terms of the overall performance. Their e-link controller and railmaster software is the cheapest entry point to DCC that money can buy. It's pretty basic and the railmaster software is definitely showing its age but it hasn't failed me after nearly 10 years of usage, despite being pilloried by many. For the 80 pounds I paid for it, I don't believe I've got a better return from any other railway purchase I've ever made. In considering an upgrade to a new DCC controller, I've been struggling in looking at the current options out there that typically start at 300 pounds for anything decent and won't actually give me anything significantly more than I currently have today. Hornby's HM7000 Bluetooth-based control is interesting in terms of breaking the need for expensive DCC controllers and dedicated programmers, 
as well as providing cost-effective sound decoders and convenient setting of CV-driven parameters without requiring a programming track. HM7000 needs to prove itself, of course, and the devil will ultimately be in the detail and the performance of this solution. How many control outputs will their 21-pin decoders have, for example? Will they be able to handle the requirements of the latest models from other vendors and not just Hornby's models? Will they have the level of motor control that people have come to expect from the more recent decoders? How much sample storage will they provide and to what fidelity in terms of sample rate and bit depth? Will they have support for auxiliary features such as smoke generators, operating fans and pantographs? Given Hornby's roadmap, some of these capabilities must already be part of the decoder roadmap, though specs for the decoders on their website are sparse to say the least. Though they are hinting at much better locomotive control than previously, and support for more control outputs. The new Bluetooth-enabled decoders will be more expensive than their TTS offerings today, coming in at around the cost of a Soundtrack's Economy series. This is still very competitive versus typical Zemo and Locksound offerings that range between 110 to 120 pounds. With the requirement for expensive DCC controllers and programmers off the table, Hornby's system could be particularly appealing to new entrants to the digital control space, be they double O gauge based or TT120 for example. I've been a DCC user since I returned to the hobby 10 years ago and with most of my locomotives also sound equipped, it's been with a growing degree of frustration that I've watched DCC sound to continue to be a premium cost feature without any significant innovation or improvements. Whether Hornby's HM7000 is the beginning of a sea change in digital control and sound generation for our models, only time will tell and whether one manufacturer on their own can reinvent digital control for the UK market at least is also a point for discussion. DCC was based on a multi-vendor standard-based footing when it was introduced. If Hornby's HM7000 system and its associated decoders work well and deliver on their potential, then I'll certainly be standing in line to adopt them, particularly if they have the backward compatibility to work with existing DCC systems just as their TTS decoders do today. I see HM7000 as being an adjunct to my existing DCC system that will effectively mean I will look to avoid any future £120 DCC sound purchases in the future. Depending on the cost increment for DCC sound on new models, I may still choose to go with the factory fitted DCC sound, otherwise my hope would be that one of the new Hornby decoders can do the job and I can gain the convenience and flexibility of the new system for that subset of my overall fleet that's Bluetooth enabled. I will be following developments in this area closely and will be pre-ordering 8-pin and 21-pin decoders to test on what remains in my fleet that doesn't already have sound capability. Rest assured I'll be covering this in detail when the time comes. I note that the current list of supported sound files includes the likes of the Class 800, the Class 91 and the Class 73, locomotives that didn't have TTS support in the past. So what are your thoughts on the DCC world of today? and on Hornby's HM7000 announcement. What interests you in their announcement and what concerns you? If you're a DCC user, does Hornby's new Bluetooth system spark your interest? If you've steered clear of DCC in the past, do you think the new system could be your entry point into the world of digital model control? Please share your thoughts in the comments. So thanks for joining today and thank you in advance for your comments and feedback. Hope to see you on the next one. And in the meantime, take care and happy modeling. Oh,